Solomon is the epitome of wisdom. Uh, he, he, he asks specifically for wisdom. We know the story well in 1 Kings 3 at his uh, coronation. Uh, he has this dream and God offers him uh, a choice. And Solomon asks for wisdom. We have to understand that in his context. Kings in the ancient world, in any of the countries of the ancient world, were expected to be wise and just kings. And if they weren't, they shouldn't expect to continue on the throne. Uh, that was their responsibility, to be wise and just. Wisdom is connected with justice. A king has to make a lot of decisions. He has to rule cases. He has to do diplomacy, international relations, uh, dealing with various parties. Uh, the king has a lot of decisions to make. And for the king to be able to make those decisions justly is important. Solomon understands that when God asks him what he wants, this is not just a pers personal wish list. It has to do with him being king and being a successful king. And so, as many would have in the ancient world, he asks for wisdom to be a wise king because he goes on to say, I don't know how to do this job. I'm, I have no experience, I have no training. I don't know how to do this. And so he asks for wisdom. We find that that wisdom is given by God and that it's then demonstrated. A case comes before him, two women, a dead baby, a live baby, both claiming it's theirs. Jo Solomon shows his wisdom by the way that he resolves that case and does justice. Wisdom and justice are related. It's important to see that because then we understand that this wisdom doesn't necessarily extend to all areas of life. Okay, people can be very wise in certain kinds of contexts and yet live very foolishly. Solomon had lots of areas where he demonstrated his wisdom, particularly wisdom appropriate to a king. But there are other areas where he wasn't so wise, uh, particularly perhaps in his understanding of his relationship with God. Now we have to talk about his wives a little bit here. Um, the, the multiplication of wives and concubines by Solomon is very common in that day. In those days when a treaty was made with a group of people in your country, with a powerful clan, with a powerful military warrior, with uh, other countries, those agreements were sealed by marriage to someone in that country or clan. And therefore, to have lots of wives and concubines is a symbol of his success as a king. This shows how powerful a king he was that that many clans and peoples had made these treaties with him and sealed them with marriages. These marriages of Solomon are not marriages of uh, family life. Uh, they're not about that. They're not about his lust or things of that sort. They are an indication of his political power. The text does not condemn him for his wives. That was how politics was done in those days. It condemns him for worshiping the gods of his wives. Okay, his wives are like diplomats and therefore it's logical that they would keep their own gods rather than adopting his. And part of his responsibility to them was to provide for them to be able to worship their own gods but it goes the final and unacceptable step when he worships along with them. That was not a wise choice, but it doesn't contradict the wisdom that he had been given.